Hey there, I'm Ari from the Czech Buyers Guru, and I've got another product review for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm checking out the IT8 Mini PC from Geekcom. It's in the style of an Intel Nook, so very small, ultra compact PC. Basically fits in the palm of your hand. The entire PC plus its external power supply is in this box, so you know it's small. I will be cracking this open in a moment to show you that PC, but first let me talk about what this brings to the table. Now, this is a relatively new product from a new company, Geekcom. This was launched on Amazon in March of 2022, and right now it's actually at $425 with a $25 coupon, so it retails for $450. That's very inexpensive for an ultra compact PC, especially one like this one that is ready to go out of the box. This is not a bare bones system. This includes 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 512 gigabyte NVMe drive, and a Windows 11 Pro license. So these are things that you'd want on an ultra compact PC, but would have to spend a lot of money on it. If you tally that up at retail, really at the lowest prices you could find, that's worth at least $300, and this whole thing is $425. Now, in terms of the processor, you get an older gen Intel processor in here. It's a Core i5-8259U that was launched in the spring of 2018, so four years old now. And you may be saying, hey, I'm not interested. I'm going to close this video. I don't want to hear about an old processor and a new PC, but really hear me out, folks. The price point is low, and the way that Geekcom was able to hit that price under $450 is using that older processor which in 2018 was actually a really high-end processor for very high-end laptops. And I think for a lot of folks, a processor like this is perfect. Four cores, eight threads, totally decent for a lot of things you do around the house, maybe for a member of your family, maybe for a kid, maybe to use in your living room, your TV room, or in your kitchen. I'm gonna be comparing this to a number of PCs I have around my house, including my own kitchen PC that's powered by a Core i7-6700K quad-core eight-thread processor. I bet some of you guys still have some of these CPUs laying around your house, maybe running the computer you're using right at this moment. So we'll see in the benchmarks how this does against some very popular older CPUs that some people are still running in their desktop PCs. I think it will be relatively competitive. And again, you're getting the whole PC and a very small one at that at a very good price. So let's take this out of the box and then we'll run those benchmarks and see how it does. Geekcom has done a very nice job with the packaging and opening up the box we find the IT8 well protected in foam and with plastic covering all of the glossy surfaces. Underneath we find the accessory package which includes a velvet bag which I found very impressive. That's nice for travel if you do want to take the IT8 with you. I was actually surprised to find an HDMI cable in the box. This is a great bonus that a lot of manufacturers wouldn't include and I will be using that during my testing. Now here's the power supply. It's a compact unit, and I'll give you a closer look later. It is a quality model, a 90 watt model, and there's the power plug that goes in the other end. Underneath the manual is the Visa mount, so you can actually use this to mount the IT8 to the back of compatible monitors. That's another nice bonus in the box. Now, looking at the manual, it's mostly pictures, not a lot of words. I did see one misspelling here for electric power inlet, which is kind of a weird way of saying the power input. But anyway, generally, if you can get through the pictograms, you'll know what to do with the system, including upgrading the SSD and RAM, and even installing a SATA hard drive in the mount underneath the system. So a single 2.5 inch drive will fit. Here is the pictogram describing how to attach the system to a monitor. And then you can see, of course, how to install the power supply, which is quite self-explanatory. Here's the complete package. So the tiny IT8 next to its power supply, this is a very portable package. And the power supply is a quality unit. Rated at 90 watts, it's more than sufficient to power the 28 watt processor inside of the IT8. Now on the front of the IT8, you do get a USB type C plus type A and audio. Geekcom shows a little flare with the top that's a glossy metal. And in the back, we have mini DisplayPort, Ethernet, dual USB type A, type C with DisplayPort functionality, and HDMI 2.0. Now, taking a look inside of the IT8, we see that the SSD does have a thermal pad to keep it cool. This is an OEM Kingston unit with 512 gigabytes of capacity, and it is a PCIe drive. 
Also from Kingston is the DDR4-3200 module. There's just one here, 16 gigabytes, which leaves a free slot open for upgrades. And then we have the 2.5 inch tray with integrated data and power. It's very easy to use. And by the way, Geekcom even includes an SDR card reader on the exterior of the chassis. Now let's get into some benchmarks. I'm going to start with Geekbench 4.0, which is a comprehensive benchmark of CPU and memory performance. And I've noted the memory configuration for both the Geekcom IT8 and the other contenders in this benchmark. Note that I've tested the IT8 two ways, both in its default configuration with one stick of DDR4-3200 running at 2400 because the system's actually not compatible with 3200 RAM and then also running the system with two four gigabyte sticks of DDR4-2400 at their native CL17. You're gonna see throughout these benchmarks that the system with the smaller amount of memory running at a more optimal setting is actually much faster. And versus the Pentium G4620, which is a dual core four thread desktop CPU, the Core i7-6700K, which is a 4-core, 8-thread desktop CPU, and the Ryzen 5 3600, a 6-core, 12-thread CPU, the Geekcom IT8 can't quite keep up. Its single-threaded performance is the lowest, particularly in its default configuration, although the IT8 does pick up some speed in the multi-threaded tests because it does have 4 cores and 8 threads beating the desktop Pentium system. And note, when I configured it with just 8 gigabytes of RAM, but in a dual stick configuration using dual channel operation, the memory speeds were up to 50% faster, which translated to an overall performance score that was about 5% faster. I also ran Geekbench 4.0's GPU Compute Suite, and here the IT8 did great thanks to its Iris Plus GPU. It was way ahead of all the desktop CPUs. Note that I dropped the Ryzen here because it doesn't have built-in graphics, but versus the 6700K, which has an older version of Intel graphics, the Iris Plus is clearly well ahead, even if the CPU isn't as powerful overall. Turning to Cinebench R20, which is a fantastic test of multi-core performance, we see the IT8 doing quite well, way ahead of the Pentium dual core and behind the desktop class quad core, but take note how much that memory configuration matters. Going to a dual channel configuration really speeds it up, even if the memory itself isn't any faster. Turning to the V-Rate benchmark, which has separate CPU and GPU tests, we see that the IT8 did very well, scoring in between the dual core and quad core desktop chips. Here, the Iris Plus graphics isn't able to get ahead of the graphics built into the 6700K, but it still does fairly well. And again, going with dual channel RAM does speed things up quite a bit, notably for graphics, because the graphics does depend on that system memory. The Ryzen 5 3600 has no built-in GPU, but being a six core CPU, it is well ahead of the other contenders being about double the speed of the IT8. But again, that's a big desktop class chip that runs at around 65 watts versus the 28 watts for the i5 8259U. Next up, we have a real world test. This is not a synthetic benchmark here. I'm actually converting 4K to 1080p video in handbrake. And we see the Geekcom IT8 do fairly well, coming in at around 19 frames per second in its conversion, which is well ahead of the dual core and behind the quad core. I should note that during this test, I did see that the maximum utilization was at 100% and the temperature hit 100 degrees Celsius very quickly, forcing the CPU to drop voltage and drop clock speed from its maximum of 3.6 gigahertz down to 2.8 gigahertz. So the performance on tap here is a little bit less than you might expect from the clock speed because it simply cannot run at that maximum clock speed at maximum load due to cooling deficiencies inherent to this form factor. Finally, we have the AS SSD benchmark, which tests SSD performance. And the IT8 comes out very well here. The Kingston SSD is a legitimate PCIe drive coming in well ahead of the Samsung 850 Evo SATA drive in one of my test systems and actually beating the Samsung 256 gigabyte PCIe drive that is a first gen PCIe drive I have in one of my systems. That goes to show that while the IT8's Kingston drive isn't bleeding edge, it is a legitimate PCIe drive with performance that's better than the first gen drives and way ahead of SATA drives. I think that's totally sufficient for a system 
in this price class and with the intended usage of a system this small. Speaking of size, let me show you just how small the IT8 is versus the other test systems I utilized. Here it is next to an STX class VTO2 chassis from Silverstone housing my Pentium system and then my Silverstone ML10 housing my 6700K, the smallest ITX chassis in the world. The IT8 is just 0.6 liters versus 1.8 and 2.8 liters respectively. That makes it 20% the size of the smallest possible ITX system. So in the end, what do I think of the Geekcom IT8? Well, if you consider the price point under $450, it's really, really hard to beat. Just imagine what else you can get for this price. You get pretty much a traditional desktop from a company like HP around the same price, very similar specs here. It's actually an eight gigabyte allocation. So half the RAM, a slightly faster core i3 10,100, about 10 or 15% faster than a laptop class quad core in here, but really virtually identical specs, virtually identical price, and it's 25 times larger. So if you're space constrained at all, you're gonna go with the Geekcom IT8, but there are a couple of catches here. And therefore it's not a slam dunk win for Geekcom. Number one is the limitation of this form factor. You might look at something like this and say, this is gonna disappear in the background. And I won't even know it's there, but in fact you will because it's gonna be pretty loud. It's really hard to get around the fact that the fan in here is very small. There's not a lot of room for air to move in here. And because systems like this don't have an open top, where that fan is placed, you're really constrained in the airflow getting the CPU. I imagine the reason that Geekcom and other companies don't put an open vent at the top is that you would risk damaging the fan if something could get into that fan. But ultimately that does mean you're choking off the airflow to the CPU. Even though it's a laptop class CPU, it was hitting 100 degrees constantly in my benchmark runs. I haven't seen that in any desktop class CPU I've tested. Now, the other thing that is going to be a little bit of an issue is the configuration of the ships in. And it's actually fairly easy to get around, and I'll get to that in a moment. But Geekcom should really resolve this on its own. They're shipping it with one stick of DDR4-3200. It's a 16 gigabyte stick, which sounds really good on paper, but it's actually pretty bad in practice. DDR4-3200 is cheaper today than DDR4-2400, which is why Geekcom is using it, despite the fact that this platform, the 8th gen platform, can't use 3200. Now you might say, well, what's the big deal? It, it, it'll just default to 2400, right? Yes, but it doesn't have timings preset in this RAM that are optimal for 2400 use. So therefore it's actually slower than using DDR4-2400 RAM. And what's worse is you have one stick. That means you're using single channel RAM instead of dual channel RAM. In my benchmarks, I showed that you lose up to 50% of your speed when you do that. It's a pretty big difference. And I think that even if it saves one or two dollars to go with a single stick of 16 gigabytes versus two sticks of eight gigabytes, Geekcom should just do that, make that change. They don't even have to change the spec sheet. You know, they could just offer the same SKU and say, we've got 16 gigabytes of RAM, even if they want to use DDR4-3200 because it's cheaper. All right, I'll let them do that, even though I think it's a little disingenuous to advertise that as a feature when 3200 RAM is not actually compatible with the system, but please go to dual channel. You're giving up so much performance using one stick of RAM. This is something a lot of OEMs do. HP does it. I'm sure that HP system that I just showed you has one stick of RAM in it. They do it for cost savings. They don't do it because it's a benefit to you, the consumer. Now, here's the way you get around it. Go with their eight gigabyte setup, which undoubtedly has one stick of eight gigabyte RAM, and then buy a second stick. This costs like under $30. And overall, you'll come away ahead. The system will be $20, $25 cheaper. You'll still have 16 gigabytes of RAM and it will be faster because it will be in dual channel mode. So I respect Geekcom for offering a 16 gigabyte allocation, but don't buy it. Get the eight gigabyte allocation and then add another stick of RAM. You're gonna be better off. So overall, I've Focus on a few negatives here, but I love this system. You're getting so much for the money. I would totally buy this over a traditional HP desktop for the same price. You get something so much smaller, so much sleeker. In some ways, it's actually more capable. For example, it has more modern ports, USB Type-C, DisplayPort, HDMI. Typically on desktop PCs, you'll have something like VGA or maybe a DVI output, which is frankly useless on modern monitors and TVs. So I like the port allocation on this a whole lot more. And again, 
I love the form factor, even given the drawbacks of the higher noise levels. You'll get around that. Maybe you'll put it behind your monitor. Maybe you'll hide it behind some boxes or put it under your desk. It's so small, you can practically put it anywhere. And that means if the noise bothers you, there is probably a way around that. So, all in all, I'm a big fan of this. I'm really grateful to Geekcom for sending along this sample. This is a really cool system that everyone should consider, either as a second system in your home or as something for a friend or family member that needs something capable, inexpensive, and easy to use. This is it, the Geekcom IT8. So if you have any questions or comments about this video, definitely post them down below. If you enjoyed it, give me a like and subscribe. And as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I will catch you next time.